chapter 29. They journeyed through that day and the next, following the twists and turns of the charred rush as it wound steadily deeper through the forests of the Anna, and crossed into Darkland Reach. Rome was gaining in strength, but he had not yet fully recovered, and progress was slow. After a brief meal on the second evening, he went directly to sleep. Bryn sat before the fire, staring into the flames. Her mind was still filled with unhappy memories and dark thoughts. Once before she felt herself growing sleepy, and it seemed that year was with her. Unconsciously she looked up, seeking him, but there was no one there, and logic told her that her brother was far away indeed. She sighed, banked the fire, and crawled into her blankets. It was not until well into the afternoon of the third day, following their departure from the Brooker Line Trading Centre, that Bren and Roan caught sight of a singular rock formation that loomed blackly in the distance and knew that they had found her stone. Her stone was a dark, clear silhouette against the changing colours of autumn, its rugged pinnacle dominating the shallow wooded valley over which it stood watch. Chimney-like in appearance, the formation was a mass of withered stone carved by nature's fine hand and shaped with the passing of the years. Silence hung starkly over its towering shadow. Solitary and enduring, it beckoned compellingly from out of the dark sea of the vast sprawling forest land of Darkland Reach. Standing at the crest of a ridge, staring out across the land, Bryn felt its unspoken whisper call out through her weariness and her uncertainty and experienced an unexpected sense of peace. Though the leg of the long track east was almost over, the memories of what she had endured to reach this point and the warnings of what yet lay ahead was strangely distant now. She smiled at Rowan, and the smile clearly caught the Highlander by surprise. Then, touching his arm gently, she started downward along the shallow valley slope. The barely discernible line of a trail snaked down through the wall of the great trees. As the sun moved steadily toward the western horizon, the forest closed about them once more. They picked their way carefully over fallen logs, and around jagged rock formations until the thickly grown slope levelled off at its base. Within the forested canopy of the valley, the pathway broadened and then disappeared altogether as the dense scrub brush and fallen timber began to thin. Warm afternoon sunlight flooded softly through the cracks and chinks of the interwoven branches overhead and lighted the whole of the darkened woodland. Dozens of wide Pleasant little clearings pocketed the valley forest and lent a feeling of space and openness. The earth grew soft and loose, free from rock and carpeted with a layer of small twigs and leaves that rustled gently as a valgirl and the highlander walked across them. There was a sense of comfort and, familiar and familiarity to this little valley that was foreign to the wilderness that lay about. And Bryn Olmsford found herself thinking of Shady Vale, the life, sounds, insect and animal, the brief traces of movement through the trees, sudden and furtive, even the warm, fresh smell of the autumn woods, all were similar to that distant Southland village. There was no rapahalogen, yet there were dozens of tiny streams meandering lazily across their path. The Vale girl breathed deeply. No wonder the woodman Cogline had chosen this valley for his home. The travellers passed deeper into the forest, and time slipped slowly from them. Now and again they caught the brief glimpse of hearthstone through the webbing of the dark forest limbs, and towering shadow black against the blue of the sky, and they pointed themselves toward it. They walked in silence, worn and anxious to be done with the day's long march, their thoughts concentrated on the terrain ahead and the sounds and sights of the forest. At last, Ron Lee came to a stop, one hand fastened guardedly on Bryn's arm as he peered ahead. Hear that? 
he asked quietly after listening for a moment. Bryn nodded. It was a voice, thin, almost inaudible, but clearly human. They waited a moment, gouging its direction, then began walking toward it. The voice disappeared for a time, then returned, louder, almost angry. Whoever was speaking was directly ahead. Well, you better show yourself in right now. The voice was high and strident. I've no time for games. There was some muttering and cursing, and the Vale Girl and the Highlander looked at each other questioningly. Come out, come out, come out. The voice shrilled, then trailed, off in an angry murmur. I should have left you in the back, on the moor, if it wasn't for my kind heart. There was more cursing, and the sound of someone crashing through. The underbrush reached their ears. I have a few tricks myself, you know. I've got powders to blow the ground up right under from your feet, and potions that would tie you in knots. Think you know so much, you. Let's see you climb it up. Let's see you do that. Let's see you do anything. Besides, cause me trouble. How would you like me to leave you here? How would you like that? You wouldn't think you'd be so, so smart then, I wager. Now get out here. Bryn and Roan stepped through the screen of trees and brush, blocking their view and found themselves at the edge of a small clearing, with a wide still pond at its centre. Across from them, crawling aimlessly about on his hands and knees, was an old man. He scrambled to his feet at the sound of their approach. Ah, so you've decided... He stopped, short as he saw them. Who are you supposed to be? No, oh, never mind. Who are you? That doesn't make a twig's difference. Just get out here and go back to wherever it was you came from. He turned from them with a dismissive gesture and resumed crawling along the forest's edge. His skeletal arms groping left and right. His thin hunched body like a twisted bit of deadwood. Great tufts of rugged white hair and beard hung down about his shoulders. And his green coloured clothes and half cloak were tattered and torn. The Vale Girl and the Highlander stared blankly at him and then at each other. Ah, this is ridiculous. The old man snor stormed, directing his wrath at the silent trees. Then he looked around and saw that the travellers were still there. Well, what are you waiting for? Get out of here. This is my house. And I didn't invite you. So go on, get out. Um, this is where you live? Brown asked, glancing about doubtfully. The old man looked at him as if he were an idiot. Didn't you just hear me say so? What else do you think I'd be doing here at this hour? I don't know, the Highlander admitted. A man should be in his home at this hour, the other continued in something of a scolding tone. As a matter of fact, what are you doing here? Don't you have homes of your own to go to? We've come all the way from Shady Vale in the Southland, Prin tried to explain. But the old man just stared blankly at her. It's below the Rainbow Lake, several days' ride. The old man's expression never changed. Anyway, we've come here looking for someone who... No one here but me. The old man shook his head firmly. Uh, except for Whisper. And I can't find him. Where do you think... He trailed off distractedly turning again from them as if to resume his hump for whoever it was that was missing. Bryn glanced doubtfully at Roan. Wait a minute, she called out after the old man, who looked around sharply. A woodsman told us about this man. He told us he lived here. He said that his name was Cogline. The old man shrugged. Never heard of him. Well, maybe he lives in some other part of the valley. Maybe you could tell us where we might. You don't listen very well, do you? The other interrupted irritably. Now, I don't know where it is that you come from. Don't care either. 
up at a wager, you don't have a strange people running around your home, do you? A wager you know everyone living or visiting there or whatever. So what makes you think it's any different with me? You mean this whole valley is your home? Brown demanded incredulously. Of course it's my home. I just told you that half a dozen different times. Now get out of it and leave me in peace. He stamped one sandal foot vehemently and waited for them to go. But the Val girl in the Highland just stood there. This is Hearthstone, isn't it? Roan pressed, growing a bit angry with the can cantankerous oldster. The fellow's thin jaw stiffened resolutely. What if it is? Well, if it is, there is a man living here by the name of Cogline. Or at least there was up until two years ago. He'd been living here for years before that, we were told. So, if you've been out here for any length of time, you ought to know something about him. The old man was silent for a moment. His craggy brows tightened, tightening in thought. Then he shook his wispy head, head firmly. Told you before, I never heard of him. No one, no one around here with that name now or any other time. No one. But Bryn had seen something in the old man's eyes. She took a step closer to him and stopped. You know the name, don't you? Cogline. You know it. The old man stood his ground. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. In any case, I don't have to tell you. Bryn pointed. You're Cogline, aren't you? The old man erupted in a violent fit of laughter. Me? Goblin? Ah, ah. No, I wouldn't be that. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, I, I would be talented indeed. Ah, now that's funny. Belgan and Hollander stared at him in amazement as he doubled over sharply and fell to the ground. Laughing hysterically, Roan took Bryn by the arm and turned her toward him. Oh, for cat's sake, Bryn. This old man's crazy, he whispered. What did you say? Crazy, am I? The old star was back on his feet, his withered face flushed with anger. I ought to show you how crazy. Now you get out of my house. I didn't want you here in the first place and I don't want you here now. Get out. We, we didn't mean any harm, a fluttered brown tried to apologise. Get out. Get out. Go on. Now I'll turn you into puffs of smoke. I'll set fire to you and watch you burn. Ow. Ow. He was jumping up and down in uncontrollable fury. His bony hands knotted tightly into fists. His tough white hair flying wildly in all directions. Rowan came forward to calm him. Stay away from me. The other fairly shrieked. One thin arm pointing like a whip in the highland to stop at once. Stay back! Oh, where's that stupid whisper? Rowan glanced about expectantly, but no one appeared. The old man was beside himself with anger now, and he whirled about, shouting into the forest darkness and flinging his arms about like windmills. Whisper! Whisper! Get out here and protect me from these troublemakers! Whisper! Drat ya! Will you let them kill me? Should I just give myself over to them? What good are you, you, you fool? Oh, I never should have wasted my time on you. Get out of here, right now. The Valgan Highlander watched the antics of the old fellow with a mixture of weariness and amusement. Whoever Whisper was, he had apparently decided some time back that he wanted nothing to do with any of this. Yet the old man was not about to give up. He continued leaping about hysterically and shouting at nothing. Finally, t t Roan turned again to Bryn. Ah, oh, this is getting us nowhere, he declared, keeping his voice purposely low. Let's be on our way. Look about on our own. 
Young man's obviously lost his mind. But Bryn shook her head, remembering what the woodsman Yeps had said about Cogline. An old duck, crazier than a fish swimming through grass. Let me try one more time, she replied. She started forward, but the old man turned on her at once. When you listen to me, as I will I give you fair warning. Whisper, where are you? Get out of you! Get her! Get her! Burn drew up short in spite of herself and looked about. Still, there was no one in sight. Then Rowan stalked past her, gesturing impatiently. N now look here, old man. Enough is enough. There's no one else out here but you. So why don't you just stop this... No one else but me, you think? The old man leaped into the air with glee and landed in a crowd. I'll show you who's out here, you, you trespasser. Come into my house, will you? I'll show you. Whisper! Whisper! Strutted! Brian was shaking his head hopelessly and grinning when all of a sudden the biggest cat he had ever seen in his life appeared. From out of nowhere, right in front of him, no more than half a dozen yards away, dark grey in colour, was spreading black panels on its flanks that ran upward across its sloping back, a black face, ears and tail, and wide, almost cumbersome looking black paws. The beast measured well over ten feet, and its massive shaggy head rose even with his own. Corded muscles rippled beneath the sleek fur as it shook itself lazily, and regarded the Highlander and the Valgur with luminous, deep, blue eyes that blinked and narrowed. It seemed to study them for a moment, then its jaws parted in a subtle, soundless yawn, revealing a flash of gleaming, razor-sharp teeth. Ron Lee swallowed hard and stayed perfectly still. Aha! Not so funny now, I wager. The old man gloated and began chuckling merrily, his thin legs dancing about. Thought I was crazy, did you? Ah, thought I was just talking to myself, did you? Well, what do you think now? Nobody meant to you any harm, Bryn repeated as the big cat looked Roan over curiously. The old man edged forward a step, his eyes brightening beneath the rough tuft hair that hung down about his wrinkled forehead. Think he might like you for supper? Is that what you think? He gets hungry, old Whisper does. The two of you would provide him with a nice bedtime snack, ha! Huh? What's the trouble? You look a little pale. You might not feel so good. That's too bad. Too bad now. Maybe you ought to... The grin vanished suddenly from his face. Whisper! No, no, <coughs> Whisper! No, wait, don't, don't do that. Ah. Uh. And with that, the big cat simply faded away and was gone. Much as if he had evaporated. For a moment, all three stared wonderingly at the space he had previously occupied. Then the old man stamped his foot angrily and kicked at the empty air in front of him. Did I, you? You quit that. You hear me? Show yourself, you fool animal. Wow. He trailed off wrathfully, then looked over at Brendan Rowan. Get out of my house! Get out! Ronley had had enough. Crazy old man and the despairing cat were more than he had bargained for. He wheeled without a word and, and stalked past Bryn, muttering for her to follow. But Bryn hesitated, still not willing to give it up. You don't understand how important this is, she exclaimed heatedly. The old man stiffened. You cannot just turn us away like this. We need your help. Please, tell us where we can find the man called Cogline. The old man regarded her silently, his thick-like body hunched and bent, his shaggy eyebrows knitting petulantly, then abruptly threw up his hands and shook his white head in resignation. Ah, very well. Anything to get rid of you, he sighed deeply and did his best to look put upon. It won't help you a whit yet, understand. Not a whit. 
The veil girl waited wordlessly behind her. Behind her, Roan had turned back again. The old man cocked his head, reflecting one thin hand, ran quickly through the tangled hair. Oh, Gogline! He's right over here at the foot of the big rock. He waved his hand almost casually in the direction of the stone. Right where I buried him almost a year ago.